Hello and welcome to another episode of Reasonable Coding. Yes, I know we had a prior episode about an hour and a half, two hours ago, but I really wanted to get into this topic of today. If this is your first live stream or if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. This is a live stream of Reasonable Software Engineering. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about actor model taken to native. It normally has been a model of computing a computation model really that has relied on a heavy runtime or a virtual machine to execute this program such as the imagery image uh, machinery around the small talk images or the beam for the airline programming language pony has been one of the languages that has been able to encode all of this in a very petite and efficient runtime that gets compiled with your application but i was curious whether anyone else had taken this to the next step and i have found that there is a framework called CAF, C-A-F, the C++ Actor Framework, that seems to have done that. And from the research papers I've read on the subject, published by the same authors of the library, it is quite interesting. So let's dig a little bit into that. Today's episode, episode number 25, will be about native actors with CAF. We're going to have a look at how a language like C++ can build upon ideas of Erlang and Smalltalk to implement seemingly stupidly faster, fast actor systems with CAF, which is the library we're going to talk about in a second. Lightweight, distributed, simple, adaptive, and log-free are some of the properties that the C++ actor framework claims to have. It's based on the work of Charuset, Schmidt, Hisken, and uh, Velig. I, sorry if I uh, butchered any of your names. And it's a general purpose actor framework actor framework. We will see what we can do with it. It's been quite some time since I've done C++ development. Hopefully some of the things I learned a long time ago are still valid. And this is not JavaScript after all. Let's begin from the beginning. The C++ actor framework. Actually, let's just make sure this event is redirecting to the live stream. And it's not just yet, I guess. Right, this I was supposed to start a little um, later. All right, and I will keep this open. I'm having trouble with um, the, the iOS app, so I can't quite read messages in there. So I'll have to come back and forth to make sure that, you know, if you say something, I hear it. Okay. So, CAF is um, an open source implementation of the actor model in C++, right? You have some tweets here by actor framework. Let's go to the features. It's lightweight. Actors in CAF are uh, lightweight, consist of only a few hundred bytes and are co cooperatively matched by a state-of-the-art work stealing schedule. Mm -hmm. You can spawn literally millions of actors if you want to. They are distributed. Message passing is network transparent love that actors can talk to each other no matter where where they have been spawned you do the hard part of implementing your application caf caf is taking care of the low level side of things simple seek and tire of cumbersome apis that make trivial tasks complex caf has internalized alan case philosophy philosophy simple things should be simple complex things should be possible i like that as a fan of Alan Kay's work, I like this a lot. This is our API principle. Adaptive. CAF allows you to transparently connect actors running on different machines and operating systems via the network. It integrates multiple computing devices, yeah, such as multi-core CPUs, general purpose, purpose GPUs, and even embedded har hardware. You can also create a message passing interface for your open computing library. Backends, OpenCLM. Lock-free. We provide a mailbox that is unique and lock-free. 
Only a single compare and swap operation is necessary for NQ and DQ operations. Our mailbox has a complexity of 0.1 for NQ operations, while the DQ operation has an average runtime of 0.1. Very interesting. Components, tailor craft your needs. Mm, this. Okay, different things you can add to the framework. Community. So far, I think there's uh, quite a few things in here, which looks very nice. We have a mailing list. We have a GitHub. Mm, developer blog, documentation, issue tracker, Twitter, research. That's the paper I was mentioning. Okay, so it actually began with a score library about nine years ago, eight years ago, sorry. During this time, the project was called libcppa. After three years of continuous improvement, not only, hmm, libcppa, not only the community around the C++ actor library grew, but also scenarios in addition to common data center applications like IoT and tools to ease actor development have been supported. In 2014, they did a rebranding. Okay, so if you knew about them or and lost track of what happened, is essentially they rebranded. Now they call CAF. I'm assuming that's the way you pronounce this. Wikipedia. Yeah. Custom right. No, that's a different abbreviation. Anyways, looking through um, the GitHub repository, it tells us a few things. It seems to be um, under heavy development. There's still things, you know, um, going on. Four days ago was the last commit. 41 contributors. There's been 65 releases and over almost for 5,000 commits, which um, are some of the signs of, you know, an active development flow or an active developer code, um, code base. So I figured instead of going into some of these um, community things directly, we could, we could try to, uh -huh. we could try to follow the guide that they offer. Found this uh, peanuts that are caramel and salted, coated, so coated with caramel and salt, and are amazing. I don't know the brand, but it's really good. Cool. All right. So if we go into the manual, the developer the HTML manual, it's in read the docs, and I actually have it open right here. So this is for version 016. So what I suggest we do in this uh, live stream is that we don't spend a lot of time actually, um, may maybe we do, but um, you know, trying to get things set up and so on and so forth, but rather we go through what is it that makes CAF possible at a native level take a look at the introduction, the overview, uh, maybe run the Hello World example, for example. And then we can um, quickly go through what do they call message handlers and how do they work and what message passing involves. I definitely think, I'm a little jealous actually, having tried to implement um, the actor framework for, for example, the, the web with a library called Reactor um, I've succeeded, but this looks really, really good, and I, I am a little <laughs> jealous of them. Congratulations! I think this is a good thing that you've done. Uh, but yeah, without deferring, the, um, sorry, digressing. Um, let's go through some of the titles that I have here. Try to get a better idea of what is it like to um, to work with this library, and then we can call it a day early. Um, I would like to have at least you know three hours set aside for just playing around with it and trying to port some systems, some Erlang projects really. Uh, let's see how, how they work. If they're faster, if they're not. And then maybe try to port the same thing to, you know, um, um, how do you call it? What's the opposite of the actor model, the non-actor model? And then compare those two things and say, oh, this took longer to write, or this was uh, shorter to write, but it runs much slower. 
or maybe it's both shorter and faster, but it's less reliable, it's more prone to errors. Okay. So, before diving into the API of, of CAF, we discuss the concept behind it and explain the terminology used in this manual. The actor model describes concurrent entities, they're called actors, that do not share state and communicate only via synchronous message passing. I'm sold already. Decoupling concurrently running software components via message passing avoids race conditions by design. Actors can create, spawn new actors, and monitor each other to build fault-tolerant hierarchical systems. Since message passing is network transparent, the actor model applies to both concurrency and distribution, which is great. So if you make message passing n n not directly target the network you're working with, right? Then any actor could be on any machine on the network and you will send a message in the exact same way, which means all of a sudden your program can run across different computers or even you know, data centers and you don't have to rewrite it. I'm not saying it's a good idea. Um, I'm saying it's a great idea, but sometimes you may want to be careful with it. Implementing applications on the top of low-level primitives such as mutexes and semaphores has proven challenging and error-prone, in particular when trying to implement applications to scale up to many you know, CPU cores. Queue conservation, priority inversion, and false sharing are only a few of the issues that can decrease performance significantly in mutex-based concurrency models. In the extreme, an application written with the startup tool toolkit can run slower when adding more cores. I reckon the standard toolkit here is referring to the toolkit around threads, in particular in C++. The actor model has gained momentum over the last decade due to its high level of abstraction and its ability to scale dynamically from one core to many cores and from one node to many nodes. However, the actor model has not yet been widely adopted in the native programming domain. With CAF, we contribute a library for actor programming in C++ as open source software to ease native development of concurrent as well as distributed systems. In this regard, CAF uh, follows the C++ philosophy, building the highest, highest abstraction possible without sacrificing performance. So there's um, some terminology here that we're going to be using. It's inspired by other implementations based on the actor models such as Erlang or Akka. It aims to provide a modern C++ API, allowing for type safe as well as dynamically typed message passing. Mm -hmm. While there are similarities to other implementations, we made many different decisions that lead to slightly differences, to slight differences when comparing CAF to other actor frameworks. Mm -hmm. Dynamically typed, accepts any kind of message and dispatch dispatches on its content dynamically at the receiver. This is the traditional quotes message messaging style found in implementations like Erlang or Akka. Mm. Right, this comes at the cost of requiring excessive testing. Or you know, if you're in Erlang, yeah, you just let it crash. Counterintuitively, I, I recognize that. CAF achieves static type checking for actors by defining abstract messaging interfaces. Since interfaces define both input and output types, CAF is able to verify messaging protocols statically. The upside of this approach is much higher robustness to code changes and fewer possible runtime errors. This comes at an increase in required source code, as developers have to define and use Right, messaging interfaces. CAF uses referencing counting for actors. The three ways to store a reference to an actor are addresses, handlers, handles, and pointers. Note that address does not refer to a memory region in this context, right? Each actor has a network-wide unique logical address. Or address. Address. This identifier is represented by actor adder address. 
which allows you to drink on. Okay, you can essentially access this actor by pointing at that, and I reckon this is where you send messages. Mm -hmm. Unlike other active frameworks, CAF does not allow users to send messages to addresses. This limitation is due to the fact that the address does not contain any type information. That makes sense. Hence, it would not be safe to send a message because the receiving actor might use a statically typed interface that does not accept the given message. Mm -hmm. And then you get a handle and a... Re okay, so the handle might be what we use for sending messages. An actor handle contains the address of an, uh, an actor along with its type information and is required for sending messages to actors. Okay, so so far you spin one of one actor and you get an address, but for for messaging purposes you actually have to acquire a handle to it. Mm -hmm. This is a consequence of the design decision to enforce static checking on, for all messages. Right, so you have actor handles and typed actors have typed actor handles. In a few instances, CAF uses strong actor pointer to refer to an actor using strong reference semantics without knowing the proper handle type. Pointers must be converted to a handle via actor cast, okay, prior to sending a message. Mm, spawning is the normal common word for creating and running a new actor. Uh, monitors and link, if you come from Erlang, you're familiar with, but <coughs> uh, essentially, a monitor lets you um, monitor or receive a message whenever the actor you're monitoring is um, terminated. This allows actors to supervise other actors and to take action when one of the supervised actors fail. That is to terminate with a non-normal exit reason, right? And links are, are like bidirectional monitors. Mm -hmm. So the good the idea about links is that you can have um, a set of actors, right? That if any of them is alive, that means all of them are alive. But if any of them goes down, that means all of them will go down. So if you are for some reason paralyzed, paralyzing some workload, then you need to guarantee that will be executed completely in all of the you know parallelized chunks then you can link all of them together or you know one to the next and if any of them goes down then all of them will start going down uh, which if you have a parent actor monitoring all of them then the parent can respawn all of them which means if any of them fails everything stops and the parent just restarts the process and there might be some experimental fe features Cool, interesting. I'm trying to get an idea of what this is like. So you have a way of starting actors that is um, dynamic and statically typed. And if you get an address, you can't really send messages to it. You need to acquire a handle and the handle will either be dynamically typed actor handle or it will be a typed actor handle. Cool. Overview. Uh huh. Now we get into the actual thing. We have a hello world example here. Yeah, you know what? Let's actually run this. Looks like fun. Um, so we can clone this thing. Actually, I think we could brew. Yeah, brew install calf to get the latest stable version. And once that is done, I reckon we should have access to, I think I have GCC but let me just check. 
Do we have plank? Yes. What version? Ten. I have GCC four two one, I think. And I don't have Visual Studio. But whatever, that should be okay. So if I take this thing here and we go to temp. Or right. Um, hello world. We paste the program there. So this seems to be. It requires all of the you know headers. It's gonna access to namespaces. It defines a behavior, right? That will get an event-based actor pointer a self, and the behavior name will be mirror. And then it returns this very weird notation, which I think this is some sort of lambda. Hmm. Interesting. And then we have hello world here, which actually is going to get <coughs> a pointer to the event based actor, and it's going to get a reference, a constant reference to the actor itself, and it's going to call self. I have no idea where self comes from. All right, self there. Request. Right, so this is, is this sending a message? I think this is sending a message. And after we get the message back, huh, we should get a message that we match with this and we print it out. Okie doke. So actor system config is our config, and then there is a lot of uh, syntax here that I am not familiar with. Um, I remember auto, but behavior. It's a function that returns a behavior, and a behavior seems to be, what is this? I'm confused. All right, so if we were to invoke clang, Then I actually have an example here, examples. And I reckon that hello world, cat application init, do they need this? This is slightly different than the thing that we're seeing on here. Right. Okay. So it just has a convenience set up for the rest. So if I do clang hello world CPP. Wait. Interesting, pretty much the same output from both. <laughs> mm. So let's um, let's dissect this very quickly. I'm going to run it again. I figured that the lines would have been broken by Tmux, but they were not. <laughs> so this is not compilable with the toolchain I have. That's sort of disappointing.
also have C-Link. <laughs> we can um, give it a one shot by perhaps. Perhaps. Cloning the repo. And trying to build examples there. Cool. Hopefully this won't take too long. All right, in the meantime, as these things build, we can um, continue reading through the docs, right? So we will have to run, oh, why did we run make inside there? Shouldn't we be able to run make outside there? Thing we do okay as this builds we'll continue eventually we'll install this library and then we'll run we'll try to build in and run the examples <laughs> there is type inspection CAF is designed with distributed systems in mind hence all messages message types must be serializable and need a platform neutral unique name that is configured at the startup mm hmm Using a message type that is not serializable causes a compiler error. I like that. CAF serializes individual elements of a message by using the inspection API. This API allows users to provide code for serialization as well as string conversion with a single free function. The signature for a my class, a class my class, is always always as follow. Um, template class inspector type name. Inspector result type, inspect. 
I'm not gonna lie, I don't understand what this is doing right now. This is beyond my C++ foo. I can make some guesses. But I don't think they will be very useful. The function inspect passes meta information and data fields to the variadic call operator of the inspector. The following example illustrates an implementation for inspect for a simple pod struct. Struct foo, this would be the message, right? And then it has a vector of integers in A and an integer in B. Foo needs to be serializable. Right. So you put a foo there, and F, as an inspector, is going to try to serialize this under the name foo. The inspector recursively calls, inspects all data fields and has built-in support for tuple, pair, CRAs, any container type with size, empty, begin, and end. We consciously made the inspect API as generic as possible to allow for extensibility. This allows users to use CAF types in other contexts, like implementing parsers. The inspector concept. The following concept class. Right, this is, these are concepts. If I'm not mistaken, concepts are like type classes. Shows the requirement for inspectors. The placeholder T represents any user defined type. For example, error when performing IO operations or some integer type when implementing a hash function. Using result type T, if inspector only requires in read access to the state of T, static constant expression, const expr, is that what that is? Bold, read state true. Else, hmm. template class T's. Result type operator. Okay. A saving inspector is required to handle constant values, left value and R value references. A loading inspector must only accept mutable L value references to data fields, but still allow for constant L value references and R value references to annotations. I find it a little baffling that I've actually worked with C at some point, it's been a long, long time but I am having a hard time following through some of the nomenclature that they use. And a few live streams ago, I was looking at Pony and I've never done any Pony in my life and except uh, Pony's, oh, what was the name? Concepts, constraints, Pony Lang. capabilities except the capabilities bit um, the rest was fairly straightforward oh, I love this I don't but you know you get what I mean okay so there is um, some inspection that needs to be in place for you to be able to s to really for you to have the guarantee that if you send a message it can be sent across a network so whatever message type you're using has to be serializable and has to be platform neutral tons to learn from this really Actors can store a set of callbacks, usually implemented as Lambda expressions, using either behavior or message handler. The former stores an optional timeout, while the latter is composable. Definition and composition. As the name implies, a behavior defines the response of an actor to message it receives. 
The optional timeout allows an actor to dynamically change his behavior when not receiving messages after a certain amount of time. In our first example, X1, models a behavior accepting messages that consists of exactly one int or one double or three int values. Any other message is not matched and gets forwarded to the default handler. Our second example illustrates an important characteristic of the matching mechanism. Each message is matched against the callbacks in the order they are defined. So that means that if you match first in a double, then you won't match on a single double afterwards. The algorithm stops after of the first match, hence the second callback in X2 is unreasonable. Hmm. So you can combine them because only one of them will ever work. And if they don't work, they will pass the message on. Message handlers can be combined using or else. This composition is not commutative, as our third example illustrates. The resulting message handler will first try to handle a message using the left hand operand and will fall back to the right hand operand if the former did no match. Thus, X3 behaves exactly like X1. This is because the second callback in X1 will consume any message with a single double and both callbacks in X2 are thus unreachable. The handler X4 will consume messages with a single double using the first callback in X2, essentially overriding the second callback in X1. Cool. Atoms. Defining message handlers in terms of callbacks is convenient, but requires a simple way to annotate message with metadata. Imagine an actor that provides a mathematical service for integers. It receives two integers, performs a user-defined operation, and returns a result. Without the additional context, it cannot decide whether it should multiply or add them. Thus, the operation must be encoded into the message. The Erlang programming language introduced an approach to use non-numerical constant called atoms which have an unambiguous special purpose type and do not have the runtime overhead of string constants. Yes. Atoms in CAF are mapped to integer values at compile time. This mapping is guaranteed to be collision-free and invertible, but limits atom literals to 10 characters and prohibits special characters. Legal characters are you know, 0 to 9, 8, Z, uppercase, and then lowercase, and the white space character. Atoms are created using the const expert function atom, and as the following example illustrates. Mm -hmm. The compiler unfortunately cannot enforce restrictions on compile time. Mm, except for length check, the assertion atom bank question mark different from atom question mark bank is not true. Because each invalid character translates to white space. All right. Using these constants, we can now define message passing interfaces in a convenient way. So we have the atoms there, right? That are the constants. Then we can say a behavior and do math. And in the branches, we have one function there, and then we have the other one. Atom constants define a static member value. Please note this is static value member does not have the type atom value. Unlike, uh -huh, okay. It's interesting. Sorry, I need to get some water.
Okay, I think I definitely... In my head, undersized this library, or underestimated this the library size. Not just because it's still compiling, uh, but also because of this here give actors that I see over here. Abstract actors have addresses and home system, right? And monitorable actors can um, essentially have attachable things attached to them, can monitor other actors and can be linked to other actors. The local actors, oh, you can get the system from them, you can get a context, which is an execution unit. You can spawn them, and you get an actor back. And you can spawn them and parameterize this with a type. I'm not sure what this is for. You can get a response out of them, you can get the names. Yeah, blocking actors. Receive, receive four. You have scheduled actors. And abstract brokers. Okay. We'll go through the, the gist. And then we might take a look at... We're going to skim through this. Actors in CAF are a lightweight abstraction for units of computations. They are active objects in the sense that they own their state and do not allow others to access it. The only way to modify the state of an actor is sending messages to it. CAF provides several actor implementations, each covering a particular use case. The available implementation differs in three characteristics. One, is it dynamically or statically typed? Two, is it class-based or is it function-based? And three, does it use asynchronous event handlers or blocking receives? These three characteristics can be combined freely with one exception. Statically typed actors are always event-based. For example, an actor can have dynamically typed messaging, implement a class, and use blocking receives. The common base class for all user-defined actors is called local actor. Dynamically typed actors are more familiar to developers coming from Erlang or Akka. They usually enable faster prototyping but require extensive unit testing. Statically typed actors require more source code but enable the compiler to verify communication between actors. Since CAF supports both, developers can freely mix both kinds of actors to get the best of both worlds. A good rule of, rule of thumb is to make use of static type checking for actors that are visible across mu multiple translation units. Mm. Right, I can see myself just, you know, start by just creating actors that receive dynamically typed messages and they just try to pattern match on the contents of them. Um, and then prototype fairly quickly with that since I know that I can throw the actors and they will just continue running and uh, even something if something starts to fail, then the supervision tree will bring things back up. And once I have something that I sort of see, oh, this is behaving the way I expect, I can start tightening up things. Um, narrowing down exactly what types I need between messages, between uh, between different, let's say, actor classes. Actors that utilize the blocking receive API always require an exclusive thread of execution. Event-based actors, on the other hand, are usually scheduled cooperatively and are very lightweight with a memory footprint of only a few hundred bytes. Developers can exclude, detach, event-based actors that potentially starve others from the cooperative scheduling while spawning it. A detached actor lives in its own thread of execution. So all of the actors live in an actor system. That includes a scheduler, a registry. Mm -hmm. And these are the common actor classes. The class local actor is the root type for all user-defined actors in CAF. It defines 
all common operations. However, users of the library usually do not inherit from this class directly. Proper base classes for use to define actors are event-based actor or blocking actor. The following table also includes member functions inherited from monitorable actor and abstract actor. Hmm. It's a blocking actor class. Okay, so this is sort of explaining what each one of the things it has are. Uh, is. A concurrent many writer single reader queue type for the mailbox type. I'm curious about that type in particular. Choo, 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 choo. I'm gonna close this example that we're not using. And I'm just gonna go into the source and say mailbox and C. That looks element? No, come on, just find me the mailbox type. And it's in scheduled actor. Intrusive FIFO inbox. Okay, so FIFO, oops, nope. Call, okay, so CAF, intrusive FIFO inbox. This is where we defined, yes, there you go. Cool, you have a keyboard for not throwing exceptions. I like that. So this is the, the magic class, really. Or at least the definition of it, right? This FIFA inbox is the one that defines the mailbox that has O1 message sending, so enqueuing, and Average runtime 01 for message dequeuing. Holy crap, this still builds. 60% only. All right. You can link and unlink from. You monitor and demonitor. This, the schedule actors as well. Blocking actors. Huh, okay, so this is the messaging interface. Statically typed actors require abstract messaging interfaces to allow the compiler to type check actor communication. Interfaces in CAF are defined using the variadic template typed actor dot dot dot, which defines a proper actor handle at the same time. Each template parameter defines one, right, input output pair via replies to with. For inputs that do not generate outputs, re reacts to can be used as a shortcut for replies to right with void. In the same way, functions cannot be overloaded only by the return type. Interfaces cannot accept one input twice, possibly mapping into different outputs. The examples below defines a messaging interface for a simple calculator. So calculator actor, is this a type? I guess this is a type alias. It says, it's a typed actor that replies to add atom with int and int that takes an int and int with an int. Yes. Cooking is happening at the moment, so there might be some background noise. Don't worry about it. Dinner will be delicious. Mm -hmm. Spawning actors, both statically and dynamically typed actors are spawned from an actor system using the member function spawn. So you need to have access to the system to be able to spawn things. The function either takes a function as first argument or a class as first template parameter. For, oh right, okay, now that makes sense. For example, the following functions and classes represent actors. Okay. Spawning an actor for each implementation is illustrated below. So you have called spawn with the classes, right? 
and then you just apply the function or you can call spawn with some of the functions and the function will get a reference to the actor itself right okay additional arguments the spawner pass on to the constructor of a class or used as additional function arguments respectively respectively all right okay okay function based actors when using a function or function object to implement an actor the first argument can be used to capture a pointer to the actor itself the type of the pointer is usually event based actor um, star or a blocking actor star. The proper pointer type for any type of actor handle T can be obtained via T pointer. Mm, okay. I I'm not sure what that means. I reckon that if you get one of these actors, right? Or if you mistype it. Right. And you need a pointer, you can just call pointer on that actor and then you'll get a pointer of the right type back. Blocking actor simply implement the behavior in the function body. The actor is done once it returns from that function. Good. Event based actors can either return a behavior that is used to initialize the actor or explicitly set the initial behavior by calling self become. Due to a synchronous event-based nature of this kind of actor, the function usually returns immediately after setting a behavior, a message handler, right, for the next incoming message. Hence, variables on the stack will be out of scope on some message drives. Managing state in function-based actors can be done either via rebinding state with become, using heap-located data reference via shared pointer, or by using um, the stateful actor abstraction. Interesting. Receive while running. Function based, dynamically typed, and event based API can be written like this. When you return a behavior object where you have two matchers, and these are lambdas, right? And function based, dynamically type with a blocking API can call receive while running through and then this will just continue to run until you um, an exit message arrives and then it will say running false and then this function will return that's why it's uh, void there but this one actually returns the behaviors so function based statically typed and event based API Calculator actor behavior type. How is this different from the one above? Right. Uh, this doesn't take a reference to the actor, which in this case is not being used. Huh. And I guess class-based actors are more closely more closely related to the ones that we found in Pony. So there's a stateful actor API that makes it easy to maintain state in function based actors. It is also safer than putting state in memory variables because the state ceases to exist after an actor is done and is not delayed until the destructor runs. For example, if two actors hold a reference to each other via memory variables, they produce a cycle and neither will get destroyed. Using stateful actors instead breaks the cycle because references are destroyed when an actor calls self-quit or is killed externally. The following example illustrates how to implement stateful actors with static typing as well as, the dynam as, well as with dynamic typing. So you have a cell, when you put atom, you get int, when you have to get atom, you get an int back, replies with that, right? Um, type check cell, stateful pointer for a cell state, that's self, and then you can just say self state the value 
since this struct is being parameterized in the stateful pointer. Mm -hmm. And for the dynamically timed one, you say stateful actor. And you pass in a self state, and that's a pointer. And then you just dereference that pointer to access the state. And that state will be of, um, of an instance of self state, which has a value that you can assign to. And you can return values from it as well. I find it interesting that because the actors are typed to reply to a particular message, returning from the handler actually returns the message. Whereas I would have expected the message to have to be sent back. So if I receive a message here, right, this get atom actually will include as well not just uh, not just um, the get atom, but a a pointer, and by that I don't mean a pointer to a memory region, but rather a an actor identifier that I can use from this other actor to reply to that one, right? I reckon that that's being handled automatically by the framework, but if that means that off the go I can send a message so that it's forward to someone else someone being another actor right Receiving messages, takes a message handler, is applied to the elements in the mailbox until the element is matched by handler. An actor calling receive is blocked until it is successfully dequeued a message from its mail mailbox or an optional timeout occurs. Messages that are not matched by the behavior are automatically skipped and remain in the mailbox. Catch all receive statements. Right. Does it receive loops? And you have a uh, bad receive loop. And a good receive loop. Bad with a while. I guess you sort of have to re-implement all the primitives to be able to schedule them, right? That makes sense. Scoped actors offer a simple way of communicating with calf actors from non-actor context. Mm -hmm. Right. So it just puts an, out, an actor around some blocking process. Cool. That gives us an idea. We're going to talk about message passing now. Yes. Message passing in CAF is always synchronous for the CAF neither guarantees message delivery. Whoa. What? I get message ordering not being guaranteed, but message delivery. Even if it's eventual message delivery. CAF uses TCP per default, but also enables nodes to send messages to other nodes without having a direct connection. In this case, messages are forwarded via intermediate nodes and can get lost if one of the four. Okay. That makes sense. Likewise, forwarding paths can change dynamically and thus cause messages to arrive out of order. Hmm, interesting. I, I would have thought that I would have thought that the guaranteed message delivery would make sense to have. The messaging layer of CAF has three primitives for sending messages, which are sent, request, and delegate, delegate, which look like um, cast, call, and I don't know what delegate means. 
The former simply queues a message to the mailbox of the receiver. The latter two are discussed in more details here, 1.5 and Okay, so structure of mailbox elements. When enqueuing a message to the mailbox of an actor, CAF wraps the content of the message into a mailbox. Ma into a mailbox element that's shown below to add metadata and processing paths. So that's the type erase tuple, as a forwarding stack, as a message ID, and a strong actor pointer. The sender is stored as a strong actor pointer, so you know um, to answer. Mm -hmm. Copy and write. CAF allows multiple actors to implicitly share message contents as long as no actor performs writes. This allows groups to send the same content to all subscribe actors without any copying overhead. Actors copy message contents whenever other actors hold references to it, and if one or more arguments of a message handler take a mutual reference. Right. Requirements for message types, they have to be default constructible, copy constructible, and serializable or inspectable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Default in system message handlers. CAF has three system level message types, down message, exit message, and error. That allows all actors should handle regardless of, of their, their current states. Right. Event based actors handle such messages if a special purpose message handlers. Mm. Additionally, event based actors have a fallback handler for unmatched messages. Right. handler or handlers and default handlers requests. A main feature of CAF is its ability to couple input and output types via the type system. For example, the type actor, as we saw before, replies to int with int. Essentially behaves like a function. It receives a single int input and responds with another int. CAF embraces this functional take on actors by simply creating response messages from the result of message handlers. This allows CAF to match request response messages and to provide a convenient API for this style of communication. Right. That makes sense. And what's the last one? The delegating one. Delaying delegating messages. Actors can transfer responsibility for a request by using delegate. This enables, enables the receiver of the delegated message to reply as usual, simply by returning a value from its message handler and the original sender of the message will receive the response. Right. So I guess that this will be equivalent to saying, hey, respond to something I need, and B saying, I actually don't know how to do that, so here's another actor that uh, will send this request to C, and when C answers back to it, it will forward it to you. So B can continue working uh, without having to wait. 
Mm, the following diagram illustrates request delegation from B to C. As shown in the example below, the result of delegate suppresses the implicit response message and allows the compiler to check the result type when using statically typed actors. Uh, I've got to say this looks like a really, really good library. They're definitely making use of C++. Not just writing in it, but really, really going the distance. Now we have schedulers. Oh, this is the, I love this part. This must be really interesting. But we are approaching the end of the live stream because food is ready. And also, I don't think we're gonna be um, talking a lot more about this. I mean, we wanna see some examples and uh, maybe summarize what we learned. I think from here, the most important, the thing that's most important to me is a scheduler to understand how they work, like, share and still work between actors, right? And perhaps take a look at errors and how error propagation happens within the system. But I also want to go quickly over registry. So let's uh, let's get to it, right? The cat runtime maps n actors to m threads on the local machine. That makes sense. One million actors to four threads. Applications built with CAF scale by decomposing tags into many independent steps that are spawned as actors. In this way, sequential computation performed by individual actors are small compared to the total runtime of the application, and the attainable speedup on multi-core hardware is maximized in agreement with Amdahl's law. Um, so decomposing tasks implies that actors are often short-lived, right? Assigning a dedicated thread to each actor would not scale well. Instead, CAF includes a scheduler that dynamically assigns actors to a pre-dimensioned set of worker threads. You know this when you know the application starts. Actors are modeled as lightweight state machines. Whenever a waiting actor receives a message, it changes state to ready and is scheduled for execution. CAF cannot interrupt running actors because it is implemented in user space. Right. So there is cooperative scheduling. No. Uh, preemptive scheduling, like you would have in Erlang, for example. Consequently, actors that use blocking system calls such as IO functions can suspend threads and create imbalance or lead to observation. Such uncooperative actors can be explicitly detached by the programmer by using the detached spawn uh, option, right? So, system spawn detached my actor, fu my actor fun. The performance of actor based applications depends on the scheduling algorithm in use and its configuration. Different application scenarios require different trade-offs. Mm -hmm. For example, interactive applications such as shells and GUIs want to stay responsive to user input all the time. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but watch, while batch processing applications demand only to perform a given task in the shortest possible time. So it would be okay for one actor to just uh, hog a, a complete thread of execution as long as everyone else uh, still runs, right? So aside from managing Actors, the scheduler bridges actor and non-actor code. Mm -hmm. I guess this is um, done through some of the actors that we saw here in blocking actors, was it? Scoped actors, right? That we use this to encapsulate some blocking code inside of an actor. Yes, it would be very nice if um, read the docs let me open the menus <laughs> without reloading the page. Okay. An external... Uh, for this reason, the scheduler distinguishes between external and internal events. An external event occurs whenever an actor is spawned from, an, from a non-actor context or an actor receives a message from a thread that is not under the control of the scheduler. Internal events are sent and spawn operations from uh, scheduled actors. Okay. Policies. The scheduler consists of a single coordinator and a set of workers. That's a good name, coordinator. The coordinator is needed by the public API to bridge actor and non-actor contexts, but it's not necessarily an active software entity. The scheduler of CAF is fully customizable by using a policy-based design. Right, so as long as you define how your policy works, then you can make your scheduler work in different ways. Huh. The following class shown shows a concept class that lists all required member types and member functions. A policy provides the two data structures, coordinator data and worker data, 
that add additional data members to the coordinator and its workers, respectively. That is, work use. This grants developers full control over the state of the scheduler. Mm. Right. So we have work still in here, is a default policy. The idea of this algorithm is to remove the bottleneck of a single global work queue. The original algorithm was developed for fully strict computations by Blumhoff et al. in 1994. It schedules any number of any of tasks to P workers where P is the number of processors available. And there we go. Thirty pages. This sounds like an interesting read. We're not gonna detour into it, but it's um, I have it there for later. It schedules. We I've read this before. Yes. Oh, so you have victim workers and thief workers and other workers. And essentially, if the thief worker finds that there is more work over here, then it's going to steal it. Yeah. Each worker decues work items from an individual queue until it's drained. That makes sense. Once this happens, the worker becomes a thief. <laughs> it picks one of the other workers, usually a random, as a victim and tries to steal a work item. As a consequence, tasks, which are actors in this case, are bound to workers by default and only migrate between threads as a result of stealing. The strategy minimizes communication between threads and maximizes cache locality. Work stealing has become the algorithm of choice for many frameworks. For example, Java's fork joint pool, which is used by ACA, Intel threading, threading building blocks, and several OpenMP implementations. Okay. CAF uses a double ended queue for its workers, which is synchronized with two spin locks. One downside of a decentralized algorithm such as work stealing is that idle states are hard to detect. Did only one worker run out of work items or all? Since each worker has only local knowledge, mm -hmm, it cannot decide when it could safely suspend itself. CAF uses three polling intervals. Once a worker runs out of items, it tries to steal from others first uses aggressive polling interval it falls back to moderate interval and after another pretty fine number of trials it goes relaxed uh -huh, so that's quite aggressive 100 steals with no sleep 500 steals with 50 microsecond sleeps and un indefinitely running but sleeping for 10 milliseconds between two attempts And then you have work sharing, which is not as cool sounding as work stealing, but it's very good. Sharing is good. This policy uses a mutex and a condition variable on the central queue. Thus, the policy supports only limited concurrency, but does not need to pull. Mm -hmm. Right, that makes sense. If you do not, n do not need to pull, then you can more easily uh, rest or be put asleep. Right, so essentially, there will be M threads, right, one for each um, computer CPU core, right, and actors will be mapped into those M threads. Like, as shown here, jobs are really actors, the workers are schedulers or scheduled workers, and as soon as one of them runs out of actors to run or jobs to execute, it will pick another victim at random, another worker at random, which we will call the victim, right? And it will try to steal a uh, job from them. And this is happening very aggressively at first. So the first hundred steals are without a, s a single weight between them, and then it goes to a more moderate stealing rate, where the next 500 times it attempts to steal, 500 attempts, will have a 50 microsecond sleep between two steel attempts. And if that um, essentially 
if that doesn't yield good results, if it becomes a thief again, then it will simply say, okay, I'll just um, pull two times and then wait 10 milliseconds between each one of them. This is a very interesting uh, read on how to schedule this um, these computations. Especially the idea of having a policy that's just a data structure to follow certain... Um, well, I mean, here it said it was a um, concept class, right? So it's more of a type class, if you're more familiar with them from Haskell. But in OCaml, I guess we could use a, a functor to... Uh, sorry, a module interface to define what, it, what they are like and provide a few, uh, a few default policies as modules that match that interface. Central in queue, external in queue, internal in queue. Very interesting to see this this mapped out. Registry. Oh, this is the actor registry. It keeps track of the number of running actors and allows to map actors to their ID or a custom atom. Right, representing my name. Precisely. This is what in Erlang we do in Erlang all the time. Well known processes which are you know Erlang lingo for actors really um, ends up mapped into um, if it's a well-known one into an atom right then you can just um, use that to find out what the process identifier is and send a message to that the registry does not contain all actors mm -hmm, because it's, this is not global per se this is local to a particular system Atom value, strong pointer. I forget if Erlang comes with um with a library for synchronizing the registry or or if huh. Erlang global synchronized um process registry. GPROC, that's the one I was thinking of. There's quite a few though. Ostellini. Synonym, okay, cool. That's about it. Errors, we'll go into errors and after that After that, I think we're gonna try to run some code. Oh, this, oh, cool, this is actually uh, finished building. So let's see if we can build examples. And I think I can do make install now. Sorry, build install. So now if I go into examples, and I tried to build this, right? Make, I guess. No, why are you doing this to me? I wanted to run you example. Uh, I might need to run uh, CMake again. User local share. But I do have, this is installed. Huh, okay. This is annoying. Let's see what that make file has. Samples, make file.
Right, you can... No, I can't seem to build any one of them. Or at least not that one. Simple broker. So this is failing because these files are not available there. I wonder what else do I need to do? Make depend? It's done. So I run configure, right? And then created the build folder and install the build folder. Oh, wait, examples. Yes, this is building. Good. So now I guess I have uh, somewhere. I have the hello world to run. Right, this should be like bin. Hello world. Woo! That run, brilliant. I guess we can now take a look at other examples because they. It seems like all of them are built. So let's look at a message passing one and see if we can understand um, what it's doing. So we're creating two cells, and we're making make a function view. I, I don't really know what this is. And we're printing out the cell values first. And I guess when... Right, OK, so the cells are the stateful uh, actors that are built with a function that we saw before, where we use stateful actor, actor as a class that's parametrized by a cell state, which is defined up here. And then we receive either a, state, a stateful pointer that comes from um, the cell type uh, alias, or we get just a pointer to a stateful actor where we can get the state from. Um, it's fun to see that regardless of how we type it in the argument, right? We get the same thing here and we access the, um, the values in the same way. They're both a pointer to a struct. Okay, so if we run this thing, this is message passing. I guess I need to build everything. I keep doing the same thing. Is there no message passing example? We can take a look at the type calculator. Oh, is this a test or? Cell, right, it's called cell. So we expect this, right? Make function view. I still don't really know what this is. So I would expect cell value to be zero first, and then after we call this, right, we set to 20, and then we send an uncheck call, and it blows up. Nice. So what if I say a group chat? Um, we can say Leandro. And then we can say Bing group server.
So it keeps saying certain clients. And this starts the client actor, and the client actor is actually. <laughs> I wonder if I need to pass any other parameters. Oh, so the P is ignored in client mode, but not in server mode? So what the hell is the group URIs? Okay, so I guess I need to do G and then I will do something like localhost 53734. No, that definitely did not work. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here. I would have to sit down and read through the source of the group chat more closely. This is definitely not processing the things I'm writing. Uh, join, reasonable coding, ma'am, didn't work. <laughs> it is, however, um, registering my commands. That's how I get these things there, right? But it's not sending join values because there are no group URIs. Join, what is it? Module and then group? What the hell's a module? I've never defined such a thing as a module. Localhost and then what? Anyway, it was a long shot, anyways. We have dancing Kirby here. Oh, that's so cool. Does not much, but you know, this is built with actors. If anything, this is proof that you can do things that are queued with actors, not just, you know, incredibly reliable systems. <laughs> Animation with actors. I wonder if anyone has built any games on top of CAF. Sorry, I completely digress from games, uh, from errors. But I think it's uh, it was worth looking at some of those things. Remote spawning, using a out, migration guides. Right. Mm. I'm going to call this uh, stream, and I'm going to end it in the next 30 seconds. This has been really, really interesting, especially from the point of view of um, an actor library uh, builder or maintainer. I really like that they went all in with um, the type system usage in C++. I am not a C++ developer. I definitely, <laughs> definitely got lost around some of the template usage. Um, it's been quite a while. Uh, I think it speaks a lot of uh, C++ that if you had someone that has used the language at some point and comes back more like seven to ten years later and doesn't can't follow there's something going on <laughs> that needs to be addressed but ultimately i think that um, calf looks really really nice if if you can bear with uh, the learning of the syntax which i reckon that if you already are a c++ programmer then it, this will be not a problem this will not be a problem for you then calf might just be the thing you want to look at for building incredibly high reliable uh, uh, highly reliable uh, and efficient systems that can easily scale across cores as well as computers nodes in a network um, i really liked uh, the message passing algorithm that they uh, sorry the scheduling algorithm that they um they talked about i really like that they have a reference to the original work this you don't see this uh, very often um, especially in all the communities such as uh, JavaScript world I, I was um, I like it I'm, this is just the right way of doing thing you know you you you're talking about work stealing the least you can do is credit it properly instead of stealing it um, I also really like that they have a way of specifying how uh, as a compile time guarantee that 
both the, the message and the response to a message will be properly typed for two particular actor classes. And if you take a look at the paper that they have, I don't recall if they have a link to the paper somewhere on here, mm, but it's definitely on their website. If we go to the website again, you'll find that a lot of the things that they, they have done are incredibly fast. This uh, native actors paper, it was I was reading it a, a few days ago just to have a better idea of what I'm getting into. And when you compare, what is it? Is it somewhere on here? We compare actor creation time, for example. The memory consumption is uh, is really really nice. There you go. And the sending time and processing time. And how all of these things move, you know, across the, the chart, across the plot. As you increase the number of cores, which typically is what becomes a bottleneck, you'll find out that they're actually pretty good. LibCPPA was it called back then. Um, back then was already faster than Scala and Erlang at doing this. Yes. And I reckon that copying the supervision model, the the way that Erlang handles errors and failure with their let it, let it crash philosophy just so that another actor, another process a little bit higher up in the hierarchy will take care of responding and redoing the work. They, they will let you build some of the most reliable C++ services or you know applications um, out there. But I'm not an expert in C++, so I will let someone else speak for that. Thank you so much for being here today, for being part of the stream. If you learned something, if you like what you have uh, seen, um, just, you know, remember to follow and go into the events section and you'll find there's some other events that have been scheduled for, um, you know, this week in the next few days. And if you're just joining in and you're like, holy shit, I missed most of it. I don't really know what's going on. Then don't worry. This stream will be available in YouTube. If you go to YouTube slash C slash reasonable coding or if you just search for reasonable coding on the search you'll find that uh, we have a YouTube channel where, oh look, there's more subscribers now than there were an hour before, great, where we will put all of the videos in here, they're completely raw, um, there's no editing whatsoever, so everything you saw in the live stream or that you missed during the live stream will be available here. Remember to subscribe if you, if you like it so that you get notifications and keep an eye open for these things. I wanted to thank, first of all, the people that built the actor framework for C++ for doing such a good job with it on everyone in the stream and I think this is it. This has been Reasonable Coding and I hope you liked it. Stay reasonable. See ya.